Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where the Commander Clash crew discusses commander-related topics, and today, we're going to be talking about our favorite underrated commanders. Commanders that don't see a lot of play or don't have a lot of deck submissions, period, uh, but we think are better than and, and deserve more than more love than they currently uh, get. So we defined underrated um, as a commander as decks that have under 500 submissions according to EDH rec. Uh, because we have to have some sort of definition, so that's what we're going to go for. Um, but before we jump into our list, there are a couple things you can do to support the channel. Um, the first thing you can do is you can like and subscribe wherever you're listening to this uh, podcast. That helps the channel grow. Another way you can support the channel is you can purchase all the beautiful stuff at mtgoldfishmerch.com. Uh, deck mats, uh, deck play mats, <laughs> deck sleeves, um, deck boxes t-shirts and so much more over at mtgoldfishmerch.com um all right and then the other thing i have to do is introduce people which apparently i just forgot to do this time Mm -hmm. um seth hi how's it going saffron i'm doing i'm doing great tomer how are you thanks for having me (laughs) (laughs) thanks thanks for stopping (laughs) by i don't know i hopefully we do it again sometime yeah Yeah. we just had a commander class recording so like i guess i'm a little frazzled maybe i should have gone my coffee but yeah hi hi tomer hello hello the the, the other people are joining me is uh krim aka the asian adventure how's it going krim yo what's up good morning Good morning. Uh, that's incorrect for all of us. I, I, I've technically been awake because we did the clash, but also I feel like I'm, the lights are actually finally on and someone's home. So, oh, wow. <laughs> like, yeah, like there's just some days that's where it good. just feels like autopilot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> sure. Okay. I'm glad you but, are awake but, and bright. But I'm here. I'm here. Yes. I'm here. The lights are dimmed for me in my noggin. I need my coffee. But anyway, um, the last, but certainly not least, is Phil, a.k.a. Bruce Kitchen. How's it going, Phil? Good evening for me. Uh, it's pretty late <laughs> over here, and I'm very yeah. awake still. It's like so, 10 or uh, 20 hour? Yeah. Half an hour Ooh. until it's 10. Yeah. So that's fine. That's, that's a good time. It's a great ah, no, not for me. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much just starting over here. <laughs> I'm a oh, bit yeah, like Krim, although my schedule fits a bit better for <laughs> recordings than Krim's sometimes. Yeah, it connects with us <laughs> a little bit easier. Um, Sounds weird. We, we need to find a cast member from, like, Japan or something, and then we will literally oh, have God. every time zone around the world. Uh, around the world, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I technically have Japan time zone friendly. <laughs> Because my mornings here are link up, with, sync up with theirs. Uh, yeah. Krim lives on Japanese time. He just happens to be in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah like, I, for the move, right? Because when I, because I, when I went and visited Japan, I was actually a normal functioning human being. I woke You're up like, at like eight a.m. Like, oh, no. yeah. I got breakfast. It was wild, dude. It was wild. That's what I hope for Vegas. Actually, that I just go there and have no jet lag and it just canceled out because I usually go yeah, to yeah, bed at like this is normal, three right? or four in the morning and then it's like oh, I can just. Yeah. Come continue with that <laughs> all right so we got introductions done now let us jump into our list i'm going to start with seth what what would you consider an underrated commander that you des- do you think deserves more love and attention ah so we just did a couple of days ago a uh, a underrated commander commander clash uh, we had even stricter requirements. I had to be under 200 decks on EDH rec, I believe. So, like, the the very least popular commanders. And I played Celestial Karen, and I might have blown up everyone's lands and made everyone kind of sad, but I kind of love this card. It's four mana, three, three, flying, legendary Kieran Spirit. And when you cast a Spirit or Arcane spell, you get to blow up all the permanents that have that spell's converted mana cost. So this is kind of like a mono-white spirit tribal commander. You can also play some Arcane spells, although Arcane, a little bit awkward in mono-white. There's not a ton of, like, super good support for it, but there are some, like, fogs and stuff that cost one mana or whatever, like Ethereal Haze. Uh, But the main trick of Celestial 
Celestial Karen, is there's a X mana spirit, uh, Ugin's Conjurant, which you can tutor up, and then if you cast it for zero mana, you Armageddon... Uh, yeah, Armageddon. You blow up all the lands because Celestial Karen was printed back before there was all a zero mana is. spirit. So you get to just blow up everyone's lands. And since you're mono white, there's tons of synergies for this. In the game, we got to see face reward, reanimate all my lands. Unfortunately, Tomer ran really well that game and top decked a ton of mana <laughs> and ended up winning anyway. But I think it's a really fun build around. I will say your play group will probably hate you because the only thing this really does is Armageddon. Like if you're not Armageddoning, I don't know why you're playing Celestial Karen. Uh, but yeah. as a as a once in a while thing to uh, just kind of get everyone, I think it's a really neat commander that deserves a bit more love and respect. D- I mean, yeah. doesn't this commander just feel like a a one off though? Like <laughs> I feel like I, I don't. It feels like kind of like how I just don't. I get bo- I like I got really bored with Eureka, right? It just kind of like it does its thing and then that's it, right? So, that, that's true. That is that is true. I wouldn't recommend, if you've never built a commander deck, I would not say, like, go out and build Celestial Kirin. But if you're someone that has a bunch of cards and you got a bunch of commander decks, I think it's a good, like, fifth commander deck to, you know, once every six months, pull out and just, like, get your play group and then stick it back on the shelf for a while, something like that. Yeah. You just went through a lot of hoops to just play a stack deck. I'll you know? <laughs> just say, it. Yeah. but it's creative. It's creative. No, stacks. no, it's true. It, it was I, funny. Like I, I love I that. How funny that was. Yeah, I, I thought it was great. But this I, is like, like it's just yeah. like one of those ones where I don't know if I would build it in paper. It's like my thirtieth commander deck, right? <laughs> it's a definition of like a one trick pony. Like you do the thing, yeah. and people. Yeah. It's cool. It's obviously very cool. Like everyone hates you, commander. <laughs> but then, but then, then you, you move on. Happen it, anyways. Right? Like, everybody <laughs> sees it. They're like, "That was cool." And then you don't really have to do that anymore. <laughs> but like I, the 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 opposite of it is like all the cards that you need for this are very cheap. Like face reward yes. is very cheap. Celestial Kieran is very cheap. Ugin's whatever conjurance is very cheap. And then, like, the good spirits and arcane spells are also dirt cheap. So, like, so you could you, get a there's, cheap build on this. Oh, yeah. There's actually could... a downside to that, by the way, be, right. them being cheap. A lot of places don't stock it. <laughs> and so you have to – because, like, no one looks for these cards, right? So then you have yeah. to go to your LGS or, or, like, and hope they have it and order online. But if you're, like, ordering 32 cents in singles, you're already paying for more, like – through shipping for the shipping so like this is the only that's annoying about ordering really cheap cards i swear my my Wait. deck overall was like 500 bucks but that was like pretty inflated by a handful of cards like there was a stone forge in there there was a uh, avison which is kind of good if you can get it down before you blow up everything oh, you yeah. get to keep all your stuff so there was a few uh cavern of souls i threw in there because it was spirit tribal so if you cut like five cards that are not really essential the spirits themselves are super cheap so i think it could be like a fun 50 dollar budget deck or a hundred dollar budget deck because the spirits and celestial karen those cards are like very inexpensive so i i think that's have you ever seen zombie hunt in like modern it's like the memeiest to meme decks where you play like yeah zombie infestation and treasure hunt those are the only non-lands and you just mulligan to get treasure hunt and then you get the zombie infestation and hopefully win it reminds me of that like the upside of that deck it's a horrible deck you never want them to be your primary modern deck because it literally just does one thing every time and the thing's not even that good uh, but it's really funny once in a while in small doses mm-hmm. that's kind of how I view Celestial here and if you can build a $50 version of it that would be just a funny backup deck to pull out once in a while and like get your fix of you know making your player paint you by blowing up all their lands and then and then forget about it but yeah don't build a thousand dollar like celestial kieran deck unless you just have those cards (laughs) floating around in your collection already i feel like you also had some depth to it too you had like a reanimator sub theme where you're running stuff like karmic guide which is a spirit so it also wipes stuff but it gets something back and you had like the uh, I don't know if you had Rival Art, but you had you had stuff that was basically constantly getting your spirits back from the graveyard and sacrificing some, them for value. Some like soul shift. spirit and everything. <laughs> soul, soul shift, shift yes. action, yeah. <laughs> like selfless spirit and remorseful cleric or interaction. Selfless spirit protects your board from your own board wipes. And then it's in the graveyard and you get it back afterwards. So like with soul shift. So it, like, I don't know. I thought I thought there was some depth to it. And even it's not beyond just wipe people's 
lands. Yeah. Uh, even beyond the Armageddoning, which is like the big calling card, there are cool tricks where you just like can use Soul Shift to get back the mana value of spirit that you need to blow up like the biggest mm-hmm. threat on the battlefield. And there's tons of cheap ways in white to make your stuff indestructible uh, where you can just like not harm yourself when you're doing this. So even though the Armageddon is what kind of gets the highlights and what everyone focuses on, there are some other cool mono white spirit tricks you can do with it too. Mm hmm. And then you Armageddon them. <laughs> and then you lose. <laughs> and then you lose. Yeah, then you lose. <laughs> Got him. That was, such a, that was such a good win from you, Telmer. I love that. That was such a good Songs win. Songs of the Damn, good card. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking yeah, of good black that. cards, though, Phil, what do you got for us oh, as yes. your first choice? Yeah, I was kind of shocked to see this because this is one of my favorite commanders and one that I might consider building in paper next. It's Jedar Gurkaula of Nefalia. It's a two mana one one that says at the beginning of your end step, if you control no creatures with decayed, you create a two two black zombie creature with decayed. So this basically means that in your command zone you have like a kind of a bitter blossom, like a as long as you Get rid of this token. (laughs) At least it's a commander. (laughs) In your command zone, you have this thing that gives you a creature to sacrifice every turn. And then you just work from there with cuts like Morbid Opportunist, Village Rides, everything aristocrat gets powered up by this. And I kind of wonder why this is not higher. There's 220 decks with it, which sounds criminally low i get that it's not a payoff for sacrificing but it's such a great enabler it gives you a creature every turn starting on turn that's the big selling point for me it's a two drop like Mm -hmm. so um, we've seen it on commander clash two times so far or even three times we saw it once uh, once was on thomas stream got to admit i had a bit of a nut draw there but (laughs) seth killed us with it i think and I brought it for Pioneer Week, which was also pretty solid. Like, the card is just, the floor is just pretty low if you have a build a deck built around sacrificing creatures, and it's a two-drop commander, that nothing can go wrong. And it's so, oh, I love it in Historic Brawl, and I will, if I get the chance to, I'll bring it back to Commander Clash as well. <laughs> and if you don't, you should give it a try, I think it's uh I don't get why it's just 220 decks. Unless I'm missing some one drop that creates creatures every turn or something, because uh, what's better than this? Jidar it's is super a, consistent. It is cool. Yeah. It's so consistent, yeah. You can just a, yeah. build your whole deck knowing that you have this on turn two and have creatures to sacrifice, and then you can go into more interesting stuff. And then, ooh, and then you get stuff like Grave Pact. So it yeah. gets actually pretty strong at some point once you have dictate of Erebos it's pretty good with victimize oh it's I've, so good I've, yeah, I think the the biggest thing that that hurts it I think it would be more popular if it wasn't mono black just because mono black's Ooh, primary sure. thing is aristocrats and then you're then Jadar is competing with Yogmoth and like Ayara yeah <laughs> But stuff, for Yawgmoth, you like... need the Bitter Blossom or something, right? You need for stuff to sacrifice. You just no. you need stuff to sacrifice anything. with them. Yeah. Yeah. But you need yeah, anything. You need something to sacrifice Jadar for it. But like the payoff it to you. is so crazy. Oh, yeah. But Yawg like, Yag- is just... Yeah. To Yag- be fair, Yawgmoth is the best card wins. in Jadar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to understand Yawgmoth. He is probably better. But Jadar is so solid. It's a two drop. Yeah. I think yeah, I, just mean, like, I mean, if you want to play Yogg, you just like swap to Jadar. If like play the same deck, don't want to play against Yogg, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the easiest swap in the world, right? Hidden Yogg, probably commander. Yeah. I think you might just... even find that Jadar is a bit more consistent. Huh? Yeah, I, <laughs> I think Jadar would just be better if it didn't have that clause of you not already owning. Uh, you know, yeah, it, but then it would no... be insane. Yeah, is yeah, it yeah, though but... you're, you're getting just decayed zombies like i i don't know i mean decayed itself ended up be, maybe because of its life in standard right like it, it seems better in standard right where i can really take advantage of the the 2-2 body but in commander it's just a 2-2 with decayed i don't know how much i but like that. grave pack right? that's like you a, imagine you have a grave pack yeah. out and like uh, yeah, a yeah, I guess. priest of yeah. forgotten gods 
Yeah. Or a skull I, there, clamp. There's so many ways to turn it into you know, skull yeah. clamp. Although, yeah, the skull clamp works as well. It's, 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 there's so much ways to get more than a card out of this one token. Like Rancor is pretty good as well. You can edict the yeah. whole table every time. And then there's tricks with it uh, if you yeah, hold full control. <laughs> like you can respond to yeah. the decay trigger. So you can even deal yeah. damage and then sacrifice the creatures. Uh, yeah, to be fair, Yarkmoth is the best thing to sacrifice them to, but you got to have something to sacrifice. It's pretty much a Ophiomancer, it's called, right? The Yeah, Ophiomancer, the... Mm-hmm. The one that the, the creates snake. a snake, if you don't have a snake, is pretty much the same for zombies. I feel like... Not every end uh, step, but... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, that would be the improvement yeah. I want to see. And I think it suffers a little bit from the fact that it had to go through standard. And it might have been too strong in standard if you yeah. could do it every turn cycle. But if it triggered every turn and you could, like, sacrifice stuff, like, at instant speed and keep getting one, then it would be, like, really good. God. Although... I played Jadar too. I built a Jadar deck, and it did pretty well. I think you were also yeah. playing this after Phil was here. I forget what Phil was playing that week. I think Sliver Overlord. I think it was a week you played Slivers, Ooh, yeah. like back towards when you first started doing Commander Clash. And I found it to be a really fun commander, too. Like, uh, it does do some really cool tricks. There's tons of synergies for it. I think the reason it just doesn't show up much is there's just so much competition. Even outside of, like, Yagmoth, you got, like, Gisa that's kind of popular that works in kind of the same space where you kill stuff and then get the de- decay creatures. You got, like, Endric Char that you cast a spell and you get a bunch of Thrall tokens that then you can Ooh, sacrifice. Yeah, so there's, like, that is true. Yeah. just a lot of options that are, like, kind of in the same space. So I think it just divides up players. Like, everyone has their favorite, and it ends up with none of those commanders being super popular because everyone picks their favorite but i also like and they all end up being in the 99 anyway it's like oh yeah Yeah. you can just shuffle your deck has yogmoth and a yara in it wow that's uh (laughs) that's so crazy yeah (laughs) Yeah. i think i think that's like a good uh good point though for people who already have like an ayara or yogmoth which are like two of the more popular ones is like if you want to mix it up your jadar is already in the 99 i know it is (laughs) <laughs> so you might as well just you want to you want to mix it up. You don't know my mono black deck. What are you talking about? <laughs> Krim, does it does it have Jatar in the ninety nine? Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, 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 Krim, it does. Yeah, it does. It does. Wow. <laughs> I just I'm just checking uh, EDH rec here. Wait, I have to kill a mosquito. Otherwise, that. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Peter. If you hear this, I mean the organization. Okay, it's done. Uh, so so there's so few Jadar decks no, that no, it's m- literal <laughs> <laughs> literal murder made it onto EDH track most played instance 5% of these 220 decks play literal murder 3 mana destroy target creature it's not optimized mm-hmm. at all I wonder if people build it as a budget commander like maybe, Probably, maybe yeah. that would kind of like help explain some of that you can also build a zombie sub theme. Like that's another oh, direction yeah, that see, I've seen yeah, people yeah. go with it. Is like kind of go zombies, which is kind of neat. Ooh. So, in, mm-hmm. in regardless of if you play zombies or not, Ch- Champion of the Perished and Death Baron are pretty good in the deck, just because you repeatedly create zombies. Undead Augur, you get to draw a card whenever it dies. Oh, that's yes. a, the zombie dies. Yes. That's another good one. I think oh, we gotta God. we gotta speed up on the on the oh, ones yeah. we're talking about because we're like twenty minutes and we've done two <laughs> commanders. So <Yeah. laughs> let's let's keep it going with Krim. What do you got us for top one? Uh, of course, I, I'm, I'm, you can also play a zombie sub theme. It also makes zombie tokens. It's not Jadar though. Give him a big hug. It's Kalidus Trader of Get. Now I play this also on that same episode that we did underrated commanders, and this only has 177 deck lists. Now I don't. I could be because it itself is a, an almost forty dollar card right now, uh, and that is pretty pricey. But this card is just a bunch of graveyard hate. You can easily do that. That uh, that uh, it, it spirals out of control every time I play this on turn four. It just spirals out of control. Because all your removal now nets you a body, and then your Kalidus grows, and then it itself is a sack outlet, so it plays with, like, you know, Grave Pact. This card is just amazing, and I'm surprised it only has 177 entries. This is, like, one of my favorite black creatures of, like, probably all time. Uh, so I am really shocked by it, because everything that Mono Black does 
it pairs with Kalidus. If you want to play uh, like skull clampy stuff, you can skull clamp the zombie tokens. And then, you know, maybe you get more out of that. Of course, you know, like the zombies need to die still, but you could sack stuff. So I don't know. I just love Kalidus. It does everything that Mono Black wants to do. And it hates out the graveyard on top of that. So here's my question for you, Graham, because I know you're like the bi- uh, biggest Kalidus fanboy. How do you actually build around Kalidus? That's a challenge I run into with Kalidus. Is it? It's really powerful. It's really strong. It does so much, but it doesn't have much that like pushes me in a direction to build a deck around it, like some other commanders. Uh, is it just like mono black good stuff, basically? Just like throw in whatever good cards and go to town. No, I built it. So the way I built it, I call it removal tribal, but that's because it really <laughs> is removal tribal. Plus, like you then take advantage of like grave pact. Uh, dictate of Erebos and all those sack out like things that benefit from sack outlets right uh you can even play like just a grave crawler because grave crawler and like you know <laughs> uh, uh the the sack outlet the the artifact can kind of just go infinite with that too right phyrexian altar and all you need is just like a a, a single pinger so that's the cool thing it kind of just you just i would just build it as removal tribal with like all of the sack outlet stuff like grave pack and all that and you'll just naturally win that way because it just you see it right like we played it it just gets aggro out of nowhere because everything dies in a game of commander yeah you had a huge board that game and like if you go back to last week's commander clash krim was i think you kind of got dealt with eventually but you were running away with a game on like turn five or something because of kalitas yeah you were 100 yeah. percent arch enemy and that was like a big reason why i got to fly on the little radar it's like and this is not only that game, by the way. I've I've done an EDH and chill with Krim, and he played Kalidas, and he just smoked the table. <laughs> I think we played two games, and the game one, you just like nobody can deal with Kalidas, and he has a <laughs> giant zombie army just by sitting there, and we all just died yeah. because we couldn't we couldn't answer Kalidas enough. I think game that's two why... was a little bit more zany, but right. But that's why I love his artwork. Look at him; he just yeah. stands there. And he's he's <laughs> just supposed it. to give everyone a hug. <laughs> Because there are so many graveyard strengths, like most decks incidentally use the graveyard, it, being able to mm-hmm. just passively exile everything is very good. And you're tur- you're not just exiling, but you're turning that into your pressure, into your damage engine. So I do think it's really strong. I guess maybe it's just less interesting than like a Yogg. I guess that, that'd be... Because people are like, oh, I'm really excited for a graveyard hate in my command zone. That's not really what excites people it's more like oh i'm gonna get draw so many cards off my command zone you what know you i'm gonna do a that? cool thing how is that not exciting though you know you just make everyone play fair magic ah, 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 no no i know you're, yeah, you're yeah. trying to do something nonsensical over I'm, there I, I, says no. I, I know that this this commander is really strong in the hmm. command zone i'm just saying that like i think it's <laughs> the reason why it's underrated is because i think people are just like less excited about removal in your command zone rather than you know drawing it, cards i think it's just drawing cards and ramping you know those it, are the two things that are end up being popular <laughs> honestly i don't know if i should say this because crim's gonna probably jump through the computer and attack me it's kind of boring yeah i think it's kind of boring it's really <laughs> i didn't it's say like, that word it's a really it's hard. a really strong card but khalid is to me it's just like a little it's a little boring but it's very strong like so power level wise certainly underrated but it's it's not the most interesting build around for me personally. That's sorry, that's Grim. Fine because because it's a vampire, so it makes me think of what we do in the shadows. You could just call the deck Colin, and if you know if you've seen the show, you know what I'm talking about—the soul sucking yeah. vampire, the one that just he's so miserable and boring that he just drains everyone's energy. So it is fitting for you, Krim. It is fitting for you. You haven't you I haven't sold gladly. me on building it, but. <laughs> just just call it Colin. That's it. And then everybody will know. Will know. Jeez. Jeez. All right. Uh moving on. My pick. Apparently we're all on the, the mono black underrated train because I also have a mono black commander for you all to pre pre use. This is an old school one called Volrath the Fallen. This is three and triple black, so a six mana commander, uh, for a six four. And it has a activated ability where you can pay two, one in the black, discard a creature card from your hand. Volareth the Fallen gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is a discarded card's mana value. So this is old school commander that I got to play before. I've seen it. I don't know if I played it on Commander Clash. I think I played it on Commander Clash one time, but long ago. I know Adriano has given it a spin as well um, on a stream or something like that. Um, and basically, this is a this is basically Voltron meets 
uh, graveyard shenanigans, graveyard reanimation. So what you do with, with um, Volrath is basically you load up on high mana value creatures. There's two in particular that if you just discard it, you get to one shot with Volrath. Um, the first one, which is like the, the old school one, Draco, mana value 16. So you discard it with uh, Volrath at instant speed so you can attack after like blocks and everything. Um, it gets plus 16, plus 16 until end of turn. So that's 22 commander damage coming at your face for two mana and discarding a card. And more recently, uh, Shadow of Mortality, which came out in Capanna, also a five mana uh, value creature. So you can discard that deal 21. So those are two instant one shots for two mana. mana. Yeah, 15 mana, mana value, boom. Uh, you're already hitting for 6, so 6 plus 15, 21. Um, and then there's like just other big creatures that you can be discarding. And what's what's Mono Black really good at doing? Graveyard reanimation, specifically for creatures. So you can reanimate all your creatures with like Animate Dead, Necromancy. My personal favorite is Strands of Night. Four mana enchantment, pay two, uh, pay two black and pay two life, sacrifice a swamp, return target creature card from your graveyard to play, do that instant speed. So boom, you're just discarding your, your new Eldrazi, your new Ulamog, your new Kozilek, or whatever, your path raiser of Ulamog, your artisan of Kozilek. You just like, freaking, you discard it, you nug people for 15, 16 damage, you reanimate, reanimate them for two, and then what, whatever, your vault have to get, you know, dealt with or whatever, whatever, I just reanimated my huge creatures and I kill you with that. Bada bing, bada boom! It's so fun. It's it's really fun. I don't know. It's uh, I don't I don't know why this is underrated. It's unique. I I, I love this card growing up. This was such a cool card. So I love I love seeing this. I mean, that, that is, is yeah, true. So you... Like this was such a cool card to me as a kid. Uh, and it still is such a sweet one to see. Uh, so I'm happy to see it on here. So I, I don't know. I mean, it seems cool. I like Volrad. It's also I think. <sighs> Power level is a little unprotected to be Six a Voltroni commander. Uh, in the yeah. in the era of 2022, you have like, remember Ural and how like busted that was if you want to try to Voltron, yeah. and people don't even play that anymore. So I feel like that's maybe six mana, no protection, probably keeps its power in check. But it is super synergistic in a black deck. You have, like you said, there's a ton of ways to take advantage of your graveyard, and we're getting more and more cards that let you one shot with it. So and plus you could always discard things multiple times, right? You could discard two cards to add up to enough power to one shot someone mm-hmm. so it's sweet yeah the only problem is the mana cost right nowadays it would probably be a two or three drop and it would actually be <laughs> legit yeah not it would probably still not be a six four then but lower stats six yeah. mana it's six four a is a bit yeesh. but yeah. for a three mana god damn whisper silk thing. cloak and let's yeah. go yeah yeah whisper silk cloak but i like i like yeah it is fragile so you can't, like going all in on Voltron is a little bit difficult. You could do stuff that would be like you know reanimate a creature if it's about to die, Malakir or Birth, and you could lightning, you can swift boots it or whatever, Whisper Silk Cloak. But I, what I like is like the backup plan. Like I don't like just one shotting people and that's it, and that's my only plan. I like having a backup plan, and the backup plan here is just you're a reanimation deck, which I find very tantalizing. Like yeah, okay, Volrath gets shut down. Well done, you you survived. But now can you survive these Eldrazi's that I'm going to reanimate for two mana? And that's going to be a little bit more dicey. I don't know. So, yeah. That was a fun one. I don't know. So that, that's a lot of mono black. Um, maybe we can get off mono black. Seth, can you, can you get us uh, off mono black with, a, with an option? Sort of. I, I can move us from mono black to Orzhov. So that's a little bit further okay. away from, uh, from mono black. Yeah, Next up for me, I got Selenia Dark Angel, which one of the things I love most in Commander are commanders that make cards that don't work in any other deck playable. And Selenia is the perfect commander for a very narrow archetype. Uh, it's a five mana, three, three flying legendary angel. And its ability is pay to life to return it to its owner's hand. So it dodges removal. That's what you think when you first read this ability. But what this ability actually says is you can lose as much life as you want in increments of two, essentially, because you can activate it in response to itself a bunch of times. So this is a way that you can drop your life total from 40 down to two or something all in one turn. Why would you ever want to drop your life total from 40 down to two? Uh, There's cards that care about that. This is the perfect, like, life-swapping commander. There's cards like Axis Immortality. Uh, There's a bunch of solo conduit. There's a bunch of the repaying. There's cards that, yeah, lower everyone's life total down to their 
there, there's cards that reward you for being at one life. Near death experience. If you're at one life on your upkeep, you win the game instead of losing the game. And then you can also throw in life gain shenanigans because there's cards that cause you to gain life equal to the life you lost this turn. And according to the magic rules, if you go from two life back up to 40 life because of something like Children of Corliss, which has that tax, sack it, gain life equal to life you lost this turn, or Tainted Sigil does the same thing, that counts as life gain. So if you have anything that triggers based on how much life you gain or when you gain so much life, it's going to gain you huge amount of life. So I can see why this isn't one of the most popular commanders. It's certainly supporting a very niche archetype. Like, not a lot of people want to be doing life swap shenanigans or these things, but if you do want to do those things and you want to try to win with near-death experience or you want to win with access to mortality, this is, like, literally the perfect card. It's the best possible commander for that archetype. Yeah, I might build that, actually, now that you... I even made a video that was, like... Ooh, I bring my life total down to zero and then switch life totals. That seems like the perfect commander for oh. this. And it's in the colors for Platinum Angel effects besides Platinum Angel. Yep. So I don't lose if I go to zero. Yeah, I might try to pull this off. <laughs> that sounds... Ooh, that's a good there might tip. might have been somebody in the group who made <laughs> did, this did, deck even and, and uh, um, made you, videos You played it. it a long time ago, oh, didn't you, okay. Taylor? Wow, oh, nice. I might have done a quickie on it, actually. Ooh, uh, nice. Showing it in action, too, that you could find Ooh. on this channel on MTG Goldfish Commander. If you head on over to YouTube, type in Selenia. It did not do very well oh, in the wait. views. You make content? Uh, it was good. It, it's going to make fun. one more view, <laughs> though, for me now. <laughs> I'm just here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I made this deck. I have a, a paper version of it. I love it. I love it to oh. death. For all the reasons that Seth said, um, it, it basically, you just get your life total to one or two, or even zero, with stuff like uh, Angel's Grace and Phyrexian on life, you can go down to zero without dying. Um, and then you just swap through your life total, and either they die because you swap them with zero life total, or uh, you get them to like one or two, and then you just drain them or you like sign and blood them or something, and they're just they're gone. Um, so the deck is hilarious. It takes advantage of like, you know, you, you could be attacked. You're like whatever. You're getting you're attacking me. You're helping me actually. <laughs> and life loss is like not a, not an issue. And you run stuff like stunning reversal, where like if you would lose the game, you draw seven and your life goes to one instead. And it's like it's very silly. I think the only thing from my experiences is someone like Krim is like your mortal enemy. You're probably just gonna <laughs> auto lose to Krim because it just yeah. loses to like a like a counter spell, right? Like if you do your big life swap thing and it gets countered, that's it. <laughs> GG. Like you have to you have to like tutor up your Boseju first. And then go for it and be like, can't be countered. Or like, grand abolisher, you know, you have to set that up. But like, yeah, if, Kr if Krim was at the table and we were like choosing what deck to play, I would not grab this one first. <laughs> I would put this to the side. <laughs> I mean... It is a risky strategy to go down to two life. Things can go wrong, uh, like a counter spell yeah. or uh, some sort of burn spell at instant speed. So it's certainly yes. high risk, but <laughs> it's really cool when it works. If you like uh, really? against the odds style decks or whatever, like yeah. this is like commander against the odds at its best, I think. And you can play around it. Spike field hazarded out of the game. You go <laughs> yeah. to one or something. And then, <laughs> You know, you can play around one. it. Like if you know somebody's having it, then you got like Angel's Grace in your hand first before you do the craziness. Yeah, yeah. Or if you know somebody has counter special, you, you tutor up the boost you first before or grand abolish her first before you go for it. But like yeah, it is it is very high risk, high reward, I will say. And yes, Phil, if you if you're building it. I'm, I'm you're gonna welcome, check out brother. this video for welcome, sure. Yeah, brother. that sounds sweet. <laughs> we'll be in the video description. Bump that up. To increase its thing by I don't know how much. I'm gonna I think it got like 10k like views even. maximum. I don't you're, know. You're, you're gonna, gonna get. Well. You'll get at least one more from Phil. Ten, yeah. ten thousand in one. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Moving on up. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, we're gonna be moving away from black finally. Thank God. <laughs> Maybe or will we? I don't know. Phil, what do you got for us? <laughs> I'm coming in with some. The most mono green thing ever. Hell yeah. It's Kogla the Titan Ape. It's a pretty obvious King Kong reference, which makes it weird that only 310 people build a deck around it. I thought that people might just, just for the novelty, say, hey, I built a King Kong deck. Seems like only 310 people did. So it's a six mana, seven six. When it enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target, target creature you don't control. When it attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. 
and you can pay two mana and return a human you control into it into your hand and then it gains indestructible so this is a pretty good rate i'd say six mana seven six it's fine fighting a creature is pretty good because mono green really doesn't have too much interaction yeah. then attacks destroy artifact or enchantment that's pretty good in commander and the interesting text two mana return target human you control into its owner's hand that could be an eternal witness for example and then you can to be fair you are not in green in blue so you can't get back an extra turn spell but you can get back any inst- anything every turn with timeless witness eternal witness there's also like uh there's this new druid purification druid yes uh, is that if you bounce thing? and replay this it's the the better <clears throat> uh reclamation sage i think it's called Let me... yeah druid of purification it came out is it the AF one that has d- demonstrate AFG. oh no never mind no no, no, no this it's is the, the one, one for each opponent or for each player each player may choose yeah it is a human yeah, I want to end the battlefield. Choose... Starting with you, each player may choose an artifact or enchantment you don't control. Destroy each permanent turn this way. It's like huge. It's, uh, yeah, if you big. just bounce that two or three times, I mean, it's if you you can also protect Kogler with it. It gains indestructible. Yeah. But I'd say most of the time you bounce for value, and that seems sweet. And a mono green deck usually gets en- enough mana to just do this every turn and is seems like a super solid commander to me it does it does and so much um, yeah there's infinite combos too there are, there are ways to go infinite with it there's like surely yeah i think the easiest one is hyrax tower scout is the creature it's a three minute three three human that when it etbs you can untap target creature and then if you have like circle of dreams druid or yeah. morrow and some I other permanent that three. taps for more mana than it costs to bounce with kogla you just keep tapping pick it up put it back into play tap it make infinite mana so there, there's some shenanigans like that i will say Kogla is one of my favorite green creatures, and I put it in a lot of decks. But I put it in the ninety-nine of a lot of decks. Yeah, <laughs> and I think same, that's that's actually. that's like the recurring thing with VDH rec. Like you can see, it, as a as a card, it's very popular. Four percent of all decks that show up, and that like I mean that counts like non-green decks and stuff like that. So four percent is pretty high. But as a commander, I don't know why. Yeah. I I don't know why. I mean, I play it in Lonus which takes a bit more advantage of its bounce effect. Yes. So that's a bit of extra value there, but it's just a super solid card in general. Maybe that's it. Maybe people just don't think of it as a commander. I kind of just want to try building it, actually. It seems so solid. That might like, be part I of it. It would be just like a very good control deck, right? Like you can, oh, you can definitely use control. it, but... It yeah. is. It is like that removal thing. I think that's like the Calitas yeah. syndrome. Is like people yeah. are like, well, I want my commander to draw cards and make mana, mana yeah, advantage sure. and card advantage, baby. And this one's just like, I blow <laughs> things up very well. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and which is fun. It just may not appeal to, it's of course, fun. the two people that only like boring. drawing cards. All right, <laughs> I'm sorry if I don't. <laughs> It doesn't make uh, it doesn't make mana or draw cards in my command zone. Does not compute. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I I I I will take that all back because the most popular mono green commander apparently is Finn the Fang Bearer, which yeah, is the this poison as well. one. I mean, people it's do love solid, poison, but it doesn't. Rather. It doesn't fit my criteria, so I think my my theory is out the window. Actually, although <laughs> I yeah, back. I was shocked about this one. Number well. number two, Savala that makes mana and draws cards. Marlin makes <laughs> yeah. mana. That's number four. So oh, I, I don't think you're fully off base. Those are boring. Oh my god, those cards are so boring. <laughs> I do think they're more boring than Kogel. It's be straight up, but like, yeah, it's more of a. a more of what like the format's all about is like you got it. The two most format's important things. All about oh, the format's all about man slope. advantage and card advantage. That's but true. You're in though. Green. Okay, I mean you're in green sure. already. You don't need any more mana advantage. The card advantage. Green can't draw cards. Haven't you heard? It's impossible. Harmonize can... is the only thing we have. <laughs> oh yeah, is there a green human that ETB draws? I like Kogla too. I, feel I like, like your Kogla. 
I yeah. think it's fun. I think it's entertaining. I love the removal <laughs> aspect of it. And I love that you can just Donkey Kong punch somebody. Like, like, <laughs> I feel like this would be sick. Krim's mono green commander if he was forced <laughs> yeah. to play mono green. <laughs> I probably would be, like, no joke. <laughs> now, how do I do this at draw ghost speed? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I play Yava in the 99. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you probably are. Yeah. You have a sick, though. You have a sick. Like, that That would be actually my number one mono green commander. All right. See? I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, wait. Who is it on? Oh, it's on me again. Um, oh. Hi. I got something <laughs> spicy that was played on Commander Clash. Uh, mm-hmm. It's Belborka Spectral Sergeant. And this is another uh, commander that I have um, in paper. That I think is really good, and yet EDH Rec people on EDH Rec do not agree with me because it's only 301 decks. Uh, Bill Borka, Spectral Sergeant, came out in Commander Legends like three years ago. Uh, two blue, uh, two red whites so of Boros, uh, Asterix five out of five. I can't speak right now. You know, power is 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 Asterix. Toughness is five. Um, note the mana value of each card. As it's put into exile, anybody's. So that's a little bit annoying. I, I understand the annoyance there. But uh, its power is equal to the greatest number noted for it this turn. And at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. So essentially, Bell Borka is a little bit of card advantage. She's kind of like a Phyrexian altar, where every single turn you get to exile a card and you get to play it that turn. So it's impulse draw. So card advantage. But the big thing that I like about it is that power, it gets huge. It, the, the largest thing they got exiled this turn is what its power is. And so, um, you know, whatever you exile, obviously, with Belborka is going to be its, its standard power, too, which could be high. But there's a lot of things to game um, the system here where you could, for example, exiling is, is, it means a lot of things. You can exile it by doing impulse draw, but you can also exile stuff by, like, you know, path to exiling somebody's creature, and then that's exiled. So that's Belborka's uh, power equals to that uh, mana value. You can suspend stuff like Greater Garganon and then pay mm-hmm. one mana to make it 10 power. Uh, but my favorite of favorites is actually Cascading. Cascading, when you cascade and you, you cascade into a card, you're actually exiling uh. those cards temporarily. They're not permanently exiled. They go back to the bottom of your library, but everything you you see but don't hit with, uh, those are temporarily exiled, and, and Belborka will see those. So, for example, if you cascade some small spell, and, ooh, what was this? I saw a Draco, and that's a 16 mana value thing. Well, Belborka is now 16 power, and you smack people over with that. Um, there's also spells that cost way less when you uh cast them like volcanic uh vo- volcanic salvo volcanic salvo 12 mana value but it costs x less to cast where x is the total mana value with the total power of creatures you control so if belborka is uh big and you have some other big creatures you can cast this for two mana and belborka is going to see it and like well nah um you you deal six damage to it but if you cascade through it it's still a 12 mana value thing and there's also stuff that lets you exile uh cards from your from your hand um and that works out too like blazing power blaze blaze and power or something like that no blazing shoal uh oh. x and double Ooh, red bend. you can uh, exile blaze? a red card from your blazing shoal that's the one i got there in the end you, you may remove a red card from mana value x or less or x from your hand rather than pay its cost target creature gets plus x plus o until end of turn so you get rid of a like blazing salvo which is 12 with uh blazing shoal I got there in the end, Krim, all right? I got there in the I'm end. So, no, no, I'm just laughing because, like, this whole deck is, like, I'm just it's stupid. That. No. It's, it's great, it's though. Like, it's, like, one gigantic 420 meme. <laughs> <laughs> also, you know what? Fair. The, this has also been a great podcast for Draco. I don't think Draco's gotten this many shout-outs. And, Draco's like, great. <laughs> yeah, great. We got all these sneaky uh, sneaky ways to one-shot people of Ultron style. I remember this Commander, Tomer. We did a... 
Well, didn't we do a gift episode or something where you yep. made all of us the decks? Yes, I and made you it for gave you. Me... And then you never cast your command. I never. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who does things like that? I, I've improved it's since like... then. That was a while ago. That was a, that was an old Seth. But I gifted you a Voltron commander. You didn't cast him. You didn't cast the Voltron. Commander. How does this deck win? <laughs> yeah. That was so sad. Yeah. So you know, like... the, you know the TikTok meme where it's like where there's a lady and she's watching me like, where does this? Where does this shape? go into it she's like it's a square hole and he's like you're right it's a square hole and it's like where does this one go and she's like the triangle and he's like that's right the square hole and she's like crying she's yeah. like please the so, cylinder it goes into the cylinder it's a square hole that was me that was watching me watching me play that pilot. Yeah. i was like please play the, play the it's so funny because seth was Asking like, how does this win? What am I doing here? Why is there a Draco in this? Set? <laughs> oh my God, I'm, I might not have played it well, but I remember thinking it was a cool deck, even as I did Thank nothing you. and did not understand it. Apparently, so I mean, you almost <laughs> locked us out with um, what's the card? Oh, possibility yeah, storm! Po- it was the possibility. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a, a monster. Because <laughs> possibility storm, it shows you every single card that you're not casting right so mm-hmm. you can you can oh ah, i saw so a draco cool. punch you in the face for 16 i uh, that is i feel like so cool. i feel like bell Bork, i got kind of a raw deal though because it came out and then like six months later they printed prosper and if you want to play yeah. like exile Oof, matter yeah. stuff prosper is just like oh it ramps you it draws your card it does like literally every <laughs> possible <laughs> thing it's like so I incredible that everyone just kind of forgot about bell Borka that works in like kind of the similar space of playing stuff from exile and and everyone built prosper decks and it's like super popular yeah bell work is not as good as prosper i will say that <laughs> Prosper's probably too Prosper's good, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, Prosper's, yeah, so Prosper's a bit like the brawl, uh, brawl commanders like Corvold and Shulane. It feels like, ooh, yeah, look, a very <laughs> powerful card. Here it is. You so, shouldn't be able to make more than one treasure per turn. It should have been capped. That doesn't like, make well, any sense. Yeah. I, I, I can't. I, I. And then, and then I, I am playing like Arena Cube, and what, what's the deck that beats my my <laughs> broken mono green deck? It's the Prosper, Prosper. deck with Lelia. Lelia turn oh. two, smacking me for four Ooh. on turn three, and then it's Ooh, drop your Prosper. Prosper. I hate Prosper. Ooh, Ooh, that's kind of sweet though. In Ooh, cube? I, feel, I feel like I Lelia that. or whatever in like Arena is like absurd. Like I don't know why that it's, card's on there. Like like it's kind of good. Absurd. Yeah. I mean, just in limited though. Did, did, does it seem? Hey, doesn't oh yeah, this podcast, Lily is but... loose. He's a lot of playing Prosper. <laughs> Not any other, there's oh, yeah, no Commander other Exile sure. Matters commanders out there. Just Prosper. <laughs> Apparently, God <laughs> hates. <laughs> and if, yeah, that's all I have to say. Shout out to Liara Porter. Also, if you don't want to go Voltron, Liara Porter also Boros also Exile Matters. I would say stronger because guess what? She ramps and card draws at the same time. Waka waka. That's the thing. <laughs> Um, so you just attack, and then you you make you make stuff cost less, and you exile off the top of your library. You can cast those spells until on the turn, and they cost less. So, card draw and card draw and ram. <laughs> That's all I. Yeah, you have a better uh, than prosper. I hate prosper. Oh man, sorry, I dozed <laughs> off there. I got oh, so boring, tilted. dude. <laughs> <laughs> Gets so tilted, to prosper. Anyway, let's untilt. Uh, I, Seth, what do you got for us? <laughs> actually, I think we skipped Krim last turn. Krim, have you done more what? than one card yet? I feel oh, like we skipped shoot. him, so let's let's crim and then me. We totally <laughs> skip. I'm so sorry, crim. Oh, it's what okay because uh, essentially, you know, I, you know what, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick one that I thoroughly loved, also a little bit around the same era of Volrath, at least when I got into the game. Oh. It'd be Arcanus the Omnipotent or Omnipotent. Uh, like, yeah, <laughs> uh, this card is a three blue 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 wizard. Tap it. Draw three cards, ah, uh, ah, uh, and then and then two mana, blue, blue. Return it to your hand. So this is actually not good at all. But I, <laughs> but, but like I just liked it it's because not back bad. It's not bad, but like let's be honest here. All I was doing with this was I was just like using it as a card draw engine. Uh, and when I when I had mm-hmm. this deck, and I and I loved this card in like <laughs> growing up, just because it was such. I built it the deck entirely on nostalgia. So. Yeah. 
it was just a cool card back then and it's still cool now it just looks cool the artwork and all of that so that's why i thoroughly loved it the artwork is just so badass it's so they, cool. i know they came out with the dual deck one or whatever but no 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 we're talking about this art this Thanks art is that. so perfect and yeah like tapping to draw three cards isn't a thing to laugh at uh it is six mana so you are paying a lot for this card <laughs> and i was i originally built this as mono my mono blue wizard commander um, just because I didn't, you know, of course you could always build all the other ones like a zombie and things like that, but this one's cooler. All right. So I, I don't know if like this is actually good. I mean, when I was told I, we could also pick some cards that I thought were underrated, uh, and, I, like, and, and I oh, yeah. chose something that I, I just had fun, right? Like I had fun with, and this card has only what, like, yeah, it has 316 decks. So yeah, it doesn't do anything fancy, but it does what Tomer likes to do and stuff. Yeah. It just taps and draws <laughs> cards. You know? when I, and uh, it's a 3-4. It's got a big body for the usual threat that I play. I when I, he's fine. You can mind over matter combo, too. Like you yeah, yeah. untap it. There's there's ways to like draw your deck and win with Lab Man or whatever, but I used to oh, just yeah. play this card for value all the time. I don't know if I ever built a commander deck where this was at the head of my deck, but if you go back yeah. to the early seasons of Commander Clash... So many of my decks, I would just play the random like the value Arcanist. Just be like, I'm gonna I'm gonna tap this and draw three cards, and if no one kills yeah. it next turn, I'm gonna do it again. And like this is the best thing ever. It was like the worst consecrated yeah. Sphinx of all time. He's but, honestly but the, not terrible, but yeah, he's just expensive because uh, he's a two worse, consecrated Sphinx. Huh. Yeah, because he's right. wor- a worse version of that. No one kills it though, right? That's like he's true. not high on the threat meter, so every turn I just draw three. <laughs> um, and, and and sure, sometimes I never get the mana to cast it, but like you know, whatever. But the the card itself is very non threatening, so no one looks at it really. And you just sit there and you just accrue value. And yeah, like it- like Tomer and everyone mentioned, you can mind over matter. You can easily untap and do this thing over and over and over and over until you draw your whole deck. But just playing it fairly is also really fun. Yeah, is it unthreatening though? I think that if you hit, if this oh, hits the battlefield. I'll say, oh my god, Krim wins when he untaps with this. Just because the raw text draw three cards just sounds like something I want to do well, you gotta, and don't you gotta want you to do. with him, right? Like, he's not just gonna draw three. Yeah, but if yeah. you, if you see, yeah, but that's the point of saying, yeah, it's not yeah. a threat. Yeah, I, I don't I, care I, it's, if it's if he untaps it. with it, it if, if it's not a threat. I'd be most a most bit people don't, it. don't see it as a threat, though. It's, like, it's nothing not like a uh, prosper or anything. Like, it's also a bit high. sus if you play it. When, like, oh, yeah, what are you going to do with this? Yeah, what are you though? doing? Why are you playing Arcanus of all yeah. things? I'm playing this st- artwork. <laughs> I, no, like, I when, you, just, when uh, you stack this up to the current 2022 commanders, it slides under the radar. Like, oh, look at everything yeah. that sits around. Like, sure, you can think about it on just like the raw stats, uh, like or what its ability is. Draw three cards, but I guarantee you this will be the lowest on the threat meter when you look at any of the other decks sitting at the table on average. True, and I think if you I want to build did... wizards, it's like safe, <laughs> like pretty low down on the yeah. wizard tier list as far yeah. as what I'm scared of compared to like Anallas and Azamis and like just all the really strong wizard commanders. So I think compared to those, it is like not going to draw as much heat, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Like it was, it was Volrath, this card, and like I think uh, Shadow Mage Infiltrator. Those were like my favorite cards growing up. I, I, I am a hundred percent on board with you because this is one of my favorite cards growing up too. Yeah, like yes, the same. art, the art, the the mysterious lore. Like he, he's basically book. like he's kind of like he has like Boba Fett vibes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. where, like he has Before no face. He's a faceless the Disney Plus series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That we don't talk about that though. That's that's fine. He he's always mysterious to me. We've never seen his face before, and we don't know his <laughs> origin. And like even even the new like I like I like the previous uh, text, but like even the tenth edition one was good too. The flavor text: Do not concern yourself with my origin, my race, or my ancestry. Seek my record in the pits, then make your wager. Because he's just like a gladiator type person. Onslaught yeah. was so freaking cool. Yeah, ah. <laughs> cool to set. And the art and is sick. And Grinning yeah. Demon was in that. Oh, my God, dude. What a cool set. <laughs> what a what cool did you, How much mana would you pay for this effect? Like, tap three cards on a 2020 design card. Like Four mana? I, five mana? You think so? <laughs> like, five mana? five mana would only be one less. But then I'd say, ooh, that's pretty scary. If in the control deck untaps with this, it's over for sure. Control deck's not five tapped. mana. 
If this gets vanishing verse, control deck's not untapping. They're I not going to tap out and play this card. Uh, maybe. I think Unless the 22, flash. I think that's 2020. Know. Well, we could see like Neza Hall is one of the more recent ones. Right. And that's like seven mana, but it can't be countered. But it's, I think it's, its protection is more relevant. Neza Hall, seven mana, seven, seven, can't be countered. No maximum hand size. And then whenever an opponent uh, casts a non-creature spell, you draw a card. So you could draw a lot of cards. But its protection is really interesting. You could also you discard draw three cards. to exile yeah. it and re- return it back to the battle of the tap. So I feel like a new Arcanist would be like, instead of pay four, return it back to hand, it would just be like discard three cards and then, uh, you know, phase it out, maybe. Ooh. And it'd be uncounterable. Yeah. And yeah. uncounterable, but I don't think you can yeah. lower its mana cost that much. You can sure. maybe make it a Yeah, fighter that's what off. I mean, yeah. Like I mean, draw, tap, draw three, draw three cards is rough. Yeah, that's... But as is, right now, not changing that's anything, rough. I think they'd have to lower this mana cost in order for be like a, to be a real card. Like, four or five I mana know. is what I'd... I'd make it five. Four mana. Four might, four might be all right. <laughs> four and, four and a half, somewhere in there. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta see. Like, okay, nice. first off, this dies to like everything, right? Like, it actually no. dies to everything. No, what? it like, literally doesn't. It doesn't that to three damage board wipes, for example. It's a three four sure. okay sure. stats. Baba, but like everything that Orzov kills it. Everything they, that that is like it. It all falls under uh, like. Like, like you mean like removal? removal? I have fierce guardianship, and I am in counter magic well, dot deck. In standard, right? Like if this were designed for standard in twenty twenty two, I feel like look at Lear. Lear essentially liar. Lear. Yeah, right. Kind of serves as the same thing, right? So four five mana. It's a three four, right? Like Lear's five hmm. mana. This could totally be the same thing. You're kind of drawing three cards anyways because you target like uh, the whatever. E- the- Baba La Saga is like a new one. It costs three, and you can draw three <laughs> cards, but you have to sacrifice uh, cards oh. of every single card type. Like, I, yeah, I keep calling that card baby lasagna. I can never remember <laughs> yeah, its baby name. lasagna. <laughs> I, and I got wrecked. Really the actual name. I got wrecked. But like that is a really strong commander, and it's three. But you can draw three cards, but you have to really jump through like some serious hoops. And this mm-hmm. is just you tap it and draw three. And it's like, but it's blue. I mean, yeah, that makes uh, more scary. Makes blue doesn't blue shouldn't magic. Have, Blue shouldn't have to work that hard. Okay, come on. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> they did just make ancient silver dragon. That's like draw ten a turn for yeah, but that's like no, seven but you have drop. to hit. Yeah, no, all that's... of this is not the same as just tapping. Like Nezaho can draw zero cards if your opponents play creatures. This one yeah. taps. Draw three cards. That's so good. Like, let us know in the comment section. Mm-hmm. What would you? What would you make this what if you, you made pick? it in twenty twenty two? For standard, yeah. for <laughs> standard, for standard. Right? standard. For standard. Yeah, exactly. Standard. We play alchemy always. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. all right. All right. <laughs> standard brawl. Okay. Let's all right. get going. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, okay. Um, I, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Sorry. I got you yeah, now. Yeah. This one, so this is one card, but really it's a shout out to a whole bunch of cards that have been forgotten over the years of Commander. So the individual card is Rith Awakener. It's a six mana dragon. It's in the Naya color. You get a six six. It is flying. When it deals combat damage, you can pay two and a green. If you do choose a color, then you make a one one green sapling token uh, for each permanent of that color. So. Rith is a card that I played before. I played a Sapperling deck with it. It went horribly. I loved everything about it. But really, this is about these dragons in general. If you look through EDH rec, you will see Rith is part of a cycle. There's a there's a five card cycle that includes a, a bunch of them. There's an invasion cycle that is similar with Dromar the Banisher and friends. So there's ten of these dragons, and then you also have the original Elder Dragons, uh, Nicole Bolas uh, in friends. Those are almost all under 500 uh, decks on EDH rec. And on one hand, this makes sense. In the light of 2022 magic, these cards aren't all that powerful. They're six mana. They need to get in combat damage to actually do anything. The things they do aren't even that good. We got a ton of busted dragon commanders now. On the other hand, these cards have really cool art. They're iconic. They're historic in the format. Like, this commander started off as Elder Dragon Highlander. The whole gimmick was playing these old Elder Dragon cards. So I think that even though these are not the most powerful cards, I think they're still good enough that you can play with them. And they do some really cool, fun things. There are some that, like, when you hit, you get to reanimate, or you hit, you make Sapperling tokens. You hit, you make your opponent discard your hand with Nicole Bolas. So for me, I think that 
these dragons that are not Ur dragon or whatever, these three color dragons, I think all of them are like pretty underrated at this point and just undervalued because even though they're not like busted in up to 2022 design standards, they're still just really cool iconic cards that I wish I saw more when I played games of Commander. I fully agree with you, Seth. Holy. Mm-hmm. That it is so these cards are so sweet, all of them. I love Croesus, I obviously love Volus, you know, all the dragons that are mentioned here. Treva. Like they're just such sweet cards, and it's such a bummer you don't see them anymore. Uh and and I think that they all anytime you play a dragon now, they've just been replaced by the Ur Dragon. Like if you're gonna play a dragon yeah. deck. Which feels kind of bad, because like At- that's why I still Counter play. Counter off Nico from Miram. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, yeah, also Mirum. pretty bad. <laughs> Miram's getting up the, up there now, right? It's like like those are the two though, right? Miram and Ur Dragon, but like yeah. you don't see Trevor Croesus or like just OG Bolus. Although technically, I think I'm the I'm still holding it down. I I, I play Nico Bolus the Ravager. That counts, right? And I, uh, He's an and I think dragon. and there's there's value to not playing the most powerful thing for your deck. I think that's yeah. something that's often missed out, and I've learned more in Commander. If you reveal Miram in your command zone, people are going to murder you. They have to murder you. Because if you untap with your commander, you're going to do all these, like, double my dragon, Panharmonicon uh, shenanigans, and just straight up win the game. So people have to take you out. If you reveal Rith, I'm going to, like, be rooting for you to get in and make some yeah. Zapralings. Like, I'm not only am I not trying to kill you, I actively am, like, happy to see your commander in the game that I'm playing. And we're probably going to be friends. Maybe I target you with my, like, secret rendezvous or whatever just because you're playing, like, these <laughs> sweet old dragons. So I think sometimes, like, it's better to play the slightly powered down version of some of these cards with how multiplayer, like, politics actually works. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it can actually be a power boost, even if it's not, even if it's a less powerful option, it could be a power boost. But yeah. they are very clunky, though, right? The original oh, ones yeah. have literal heavy downsides. Oh, like, yeah, the, the, the first cycle is the worst. Not a cumulative too. upkeep, but an upkeep yeah. cost of three mana Ooh, just to ouch. keep them around. Yeah, the other ones pretty much they have an attack trigger that costs three mana, like uh, hit your opponent trigger. That's also a bit. Yeah. Ugh, don't want to pay mana for this. We might get new ones in Dominaria, right? Then we see a Rith. We or saw something we saw one. new art for Rith. Yep. Mm-hmm. The new so ones are probably going to be sick. absolutely busted. They're, they're going to make these broken. look like nothing. <laughs> yeah. These yeah. are going to make these look like yeah. jokes. Uh, um, also, fun fact: Miram Sentinel Worm came out a couple months ago. It's the second most popular team or commander already on EDH Rec. Second most. Wow! I, like two months. I will I mean, admit, I like that card versions. when I saw it. Like it's it's, it's a great. really cool it's, card, and it's really it strong. So great. there's a reason why it's so popular. But it's also like you got to kill them. You oh, you, kill you have them. to. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a very good point, right? A, a lot of Commander Clash games start like this. You'd look at everybody's commander and say, "Oh, yep, yeah, this buddy, we got to kill this one." <laughs> and it's just is... like whatever Phil brought for the week. <laughs> 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 when you were starting out, you're, 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 you've chilled down a lot, but like, yeah, yeah, that's kind of a. Usually I just admit when I'm bringing something yeah. broken, say, yeah, yeah, you should probably kill yeah, me. Phil, <laughs> Phil does just straight up say it, yeah. That's true. <laughs> Take me that's out. True. But, um. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I like the old dragons and, yeah. and play them more because they're cool, even if they suck. Yeah. <laughs> they still are cool cards. They, they have, have value very much that. style points with them. Yeah being the original elder dragons it's gotta well, be worth something yeah it's, the invasion ones are not elder dragons by the way just, just yeah clarify. because uh, i know there's gonna be angry comments but they're not elder dragons yeah. sure yeah, um, yeah yeah they should have been they, they would be if they printed them today they totally probably. Yeah. Yeah. now they, they should be elder oh, okay. dragons because even in the lore they're like they're basically demigods yeah um so okay i thought anyway. there was a lore reason or something no they should be but anyway uh phil what do you got for us for the third I got one? a little bit of an older one here as well. I think it's from Tempest. It's Fati Ildal. Um, it's a 4 mm-hmm. mana 3-3 three, three that taps <laughs> and target creature has base power and toughness 1. Uh, or base toughness 1. So yeah. you can mess with the stats of creatures, which is not really anything a lot of commanders do and he only has 149 decks uh so as you can imagine there's a lot of very unique things to do with him since there's yes i said there's not many things that do this like knights of souls betrayal 
curse is a player, and then oh no, it's not the curse one. Everybody, just, yeah, everybody gets all creatures, all creatures get, get one minus one. one, minus one. So this one is pretty much tap destroy target creature, which it's pretty easy to untap him as well. Then there's like pestilence. Um, you can gain value from all this dying. Minus one, minus one counters get very interesting if you can just tap them down to kill them. And it's like a very good political tool for a commander table, I think, because you can use it to mess with the combat of other players. I think it's just a super unique commander. I almost played it last Clash where we did unpopular commanders. But I didn't, so uh, yeah. I It's cool, though. One of my all-time favorite commander decks I played was the was actually a Valdiel doll deck. It was a, a planner week on Commander Clash, where we each had to only play with cards from a single plane. And I had Wrath, so it was like all the Tempest cards and some other old blocks. Mm-hmm. But I played uh, Vadiel Dahl as my commander, and it ended up like going off in the game with like Bullwhip was like the big card. Obviously, the deck oh, was limited yeah. because because I couldn't I could only play stuff from uh, from this one plane. But Bullwhip is this four mana artifact that you pay two and tap it, and you deal one damage to something, and that thing has to attack. So you could snipe everything with Vadiel Dahl, and I also had like Pit Spawn, which like it has first strike and it deals damage something you have to exile stuff so bullwhip would make people attack into it and they get exiled and it was like a really sweet game so i have a i have a lot of respect for this commander it can actually do some really really fun powerful things that was one of my favorite games of all time by the way that's one of my we favorites had spice too. eight rack on on i believe for that because well, i think it was the guest season yeah 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 and he was killing he was killing richard's theros <laughs> gods indestructible <laughs> gods with a pit swan, a bullwhip, and Vadia doll all working in tandem, it was like oh, it's it's the so most good. ridiculous <laughs> wow. game I've ever seen. Um, so Vadi, yeah, that is also yeah. You don't see like power toughness manipulation in I don't think much ever, but like no. in Golgari colors, Maybe like in who blue, does yes. this? I thought it'd be it's in like blue so red. Weird. And it's yeah, yeah, blue, red, red yeah. maybe, maybe blue. Like, I could see red and blue having a, an option for this, but Golgari colors? That's yeah. so weird. I love it. It's a pretty <laughs> old card. It's from... I think Tempest. I should probably really find know, out from Tempest. where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Originally Tempest. Tempest yeah. Stronghold? Is... I don't know. I think it's Tempest. Yeah. Oh, now I have to check yeah, Tempest. it. Yeah, Tempest. Tempest. And it's um, it's cool it that it can be is... power or toughness, so you can use it to, like, all these Voltron threats Tomer has been talking about. Let them discard their stuff and make their huge thing, and then just tap your body and make it one power, and you yeah, don't take it, hardly any damage. Or, or you yeah. can do it the other way. We hit the toughness and stuff trades off in combat, or you ping it, so... It actually has a lot of flexibility. I wish it was printed today maybe a little bit cheaper. It's only a four mana three three. Like maybe knock a man off the cost or something. But even at four mana, it's still just it's a sweet commander. Unique, very yeah. unique commander. It's definitely a cool one. Yeah. yeah. By the way, Our- Tempest came out in nineteen ninety seven. Sounds right. It's a pretty I'm old going one. Going to turn into dust. <laughs> I was I remember, four years old at this point. I was <laughs> and magic as well. Six. <laughs> yeah, I was six. Nine. <clears throat> Yay! Old. <laughs> uh, Krim, fellow old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? This, for is just, this is just the retirement home right now. That's yeah. going on here. Okay. Um, uh, well, most of our listeners would not be alive when. I I don't think so. Uh, most of our listeners are also old, so we're we're yeah, good. Yeah. Old, <laughs> this is a tough one for me, but but I think I'm gonna go with also another old commander that I thoroughly enjoy. This was before I had an Alayla deck, uh, and and I often shift between it, but I had uh, Urtai the Corrupted. It's two Ooh. and Esper, two white, blue, black. Uh, you tap a blue and tap itself, sack a creature or enchantment counter target spell. So obviously you could see why Alayla was <laughs> awesome, right? It's a mana cheaper and then it just makes a whole <laughs> army. But before that, dude, I was just, I, I, I was playing Enchantress and I had a counter spell every time. Why do you it like was, this? Crim- this is such it's a grim so commander. Such this a is crim- such a grim commander. Dude, God. the card is sick though. You Oh. <laughs> 
It does everything I wanted to do. It does everything I wanted to do. Like, it counters spells. It allows me to use, like, sagas and stuff like that. Uh, Once they're about to, like, be useless, just sack them, counter a spell. So then people are like, well, are you going to cast into that? Because you know he's going to sack. You know, like, (laughs) and then obviously there's the untapping parts of it. You know, you could, like, play, uh, what is it, Pemmin's Aura or whatever, which at one point was, like, a $20 card. But to untap it and then you would just kind of do things again. (laughs) Like counter spells. And lack yeah, people yeah. out of playing magic. Play like yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I, I mean, yeah, okay. I, I, so, I soon found out that, like, yeah, maybe, maybe solemnity and decree of silence is hilariously brutal. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that, yeah. Oh that sounds God. that sounds rough. Yeah, that that is the most crim deck. It is neat though. It, it, there's not Very many neat. other commanders that work like that. So it's another super unique one. There's a few cards that work really well with it, like. There's one super janky card that I've always wanted to make work that seems perfect for an Erudite deck, and it's called uh, Hatching Plans, which is like a Mm -hmm. two-mana enchantment that does nothing, but when it goes to the graveyard, you get to draw three cards. So it seems like perfect for like looping with Erudite, you counter something, draw a bunch of cards. So there are some some neat cards that you wouldn't see in any other deck that do work really well with it. So Yeah, that's it's a lot of fun, oh my. I, I definitely respect it, and I'm very, like, interested in it, as long as I'm not playing against it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, know, it's like, a good good deck like, to wow. bird. You, yeah, like, stand behind the people's shoulders and watch yeah. other people, and you're like, that That's looks cool. Wild. I'm glad I'm not That's there. Cool. <laughs> what a cool commander. I've never seen these yeah. cards before. Have fun, you guys. Yeah. And they're just yeah, like, see you later. Don't worry, please. <laughs> Let this me thing- die. It's so fun, though. Oh, my God. This is like Enchanted uh, Evening. You put oh on Enchanted Evening. You always have an enchantment. No, man. Like, I'll, I'll, I will LD myself <laughs> to make sure that it's... Just kill me, please. <laughs> but, yeah, this is just now a card I put in Alayla because Alayla makes creatures that you could then set. Yeah. So I mean, exciting. we are getting a new Urtai soon, so maybe... Yeah. Maybe there's a new chance for a new Esper Enchantress thingy going on. Look, I just have a th- I, I have a thing for overcosted three four wizards. That's all. <laughs> I, I, so far, that's all I've gathered from this podcast. <laughs> and the three four, they're pretty good. I I would love to see Esper <laughs> Enchantress <clears throat> supported by a less miserable commander <laughs> because we don't really we have, have a lot of support there? for that color combination. Yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think it's the yeah. archetype that's miserable. It doesn't matter what's at the helm, right? <laughs> but, I mean, but I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather play against counters. Alayla than Sithis. I don't know. Yeah. At least, at least, at least Urtai, you can just kill it, and they're probably not going to get it yeah. back up. It is but, set, like, it's like, like I kill up. Sithis. Like, oh, whatever. I'm in green. I play for four <laughs> yeah, minutes. Sithis. Yeah, I win. <laughs> Sithis seems like one of these custom cards. I'm just ignore this and just... <laughs> It's gonna be forever. I mean, it's, the greatest it's great fun. I think you'd love it, Phil. But also, oh, I played it. Sometimes I play historic brawl, like see historic brawl. Like I embrace the most broken stuff, and then I play mm-hmm. against the most broken stuff. That's fine. But yeah, some cards. Sometimes you gotta chill with the power <laughs> level a bit when card designing. And Sithis was definitely no chill all the way to the bank. Like two mana <laughs> artifact. Draws cards when casting artifacts. Why? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. And that's and that's why we have underrated commanders. Hooray! Yay! If you want to chill, check out these these plays. Lists. Play an old dragon. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to chill, yeah. <laughs> Urtai Speak- only has three hundred and eighty eight decks. Yep. And the, yeah, like so. Th- thankfully. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you kill it once, and then it's probably yeah, like, yeah. And then you're, what, you're not done. you're not green. It's not like you're recasting anything. Yeah. It's just I, you got to kill it once. You got to get it before he has the counter magic. I think it's the principle of what the card does, not actually how powerful it is. I think yeah. that's yeah. why people don't like it. <laughs> well, here's here's one that's uh, in white and blue, and it's kind of expensive, but I feel like I feel like it's just fun for the full, whole family. Um, it's spurious and inscrutable. Oh. I, okay, so I have like, I, I have a list. I, like I, I love underrated commanders, so I have a list. But I gotta I gotta prioritize here. I, I know Dax is gonna be a hard sell. 
We're going to go for <laughs> something that I hope is a little bit easier. It's very inscrutable. It's 190 decks, so it's on the low end. Um, and I played it on stream fairly recently, and I had such a blast. I actually played it on Commander Clash one time, and we had a Commander Clash moment where I tried to... I almost got... That was the I punt almost or bluff, the punt right? and bluff. Pun and bluff. I was attacking with with Krim, and he was like, "Oh, there's." He had to be attacking by accident. There's no way you would attack into this. He had like a six four, and I was attacking with three six. It doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense. And I had the thunderclap wyvern. It gives plus one plus one. And it's flash speed, but then Seth had like a chaos one and like hit a negate oh, or yeah. something. Like, <laughs> essence, yes. essence scatter or whatever. I'm not bitter. I don't. It's not like I just think about Your that every once in a while. Was outclashed by Seth. <laughs> yeah, it was the perfect punter bluff, and and then uh, and then Seth had to R and G into a freaking counterspell, and then he used. Is it because he's a he's, he's oh, just the greatest person? That was so good. I'm not bitter. <laughs> not bitter. Um, why, yeah. Why? Uh, why are all my commander clash <clears throat> moments wrecking you, Tomer? It feels like all the all the great <laughs> moments involve something similar. There is a pattern. <laughs> I'm not bitter. It's fine. Uh, but back to this. Back to this commander. You're all the worst. <laughs> uh, back to this commander. It's uh, five mana. Uh, Zorius Commander, one double white, double blue, three six flyer. Um, it's a Sphinx, and it has a really cool combat trigger. When it deals combat damage to a player, you name a card. That player reveals their hand. If they reveal the named card, you search your library for a creature card with flying, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So every single time you deal combat damage, if you correctly guess what your opponent's ha- uh, card in your opponent's hand, they reveal it. So now that knowledge is known to everybody, uh, you got to tutor up a flying creature card and put it into your hand, which is incredibly unique. I don't know if there are any tutors for f- specifically flyers. So every single time you deal combat damage, you could be tutoring up a creature, a flying creature. So this like lends itself very well to flying tribal. The version I did uh, was actually Sphinx tribal with Unesh as the mm. hidden commander. Unesh is, makes all Sphinxes cost two less to cast. And then they have a mini factor fiction, uh, mini factor fiction of four. So you reveal, you reveal the top four cards. You let the opponent sort them into two piles. You choose whichever pile. One of them goes into your hand. That the other one goes into the graveyard. So you go into Sphinx Tribal like that, and that's super fun. And um, hitting a blind, blind calling somebody's a card from somebody's hand is difficult. However, there are a lot of ways to actually just see what's in people's hand. My favorite is telepathy. Each of your opponents play with their hands revealed. So that's like easy, easy mode. Uh, glasses of Urza to help Asperia see. You put on her glasses and you can tap it to look at target player's mm. hand. That's a hoot. You can tutor them both up with Dizzy spell, by the way. You can transmute for three and put either in your hand. And then there's stuff like Peak, um, which also lets you look at somebody's hand and get taxing probe. Or you could go the other way. You could use like unsummon effects like into the royal or just straight up unsummon. I actually used unsummon. It was great. You just bounce something back to their hand and now you know what, what's in their hand and you, you peek that way too. And they're flexible because you could like, you know, substantiate something or vents or something uh, to protect your stuff. And uh, now you know what's in their hand as well. Um, so I don't know. It's super fun. It's like flying tribal, tutor on a stick, repeatable, very mana efficient. Five mana is, you know, on the higher end these days, but like... This is like an ancient card. This is like 15 years old. And it's yeah. five. Like, I would expect this to be like an eight mana card from 15 years ago. But like, it's five. It's like, I'm, not bad. You do got to jump through the hoop. You got to have the telepathy. Yeah, or so. Like, if you're, if you're, if you're yeah. just blind guessing, it's going to be a little inconsistent. But if you build yeah. around it and you're triggering every single turn, it is like kind of on rate. Even in 2022, five mana, three, six with flying. Like those are not bad stats, especially with an ability that's going to generate a bunch of card advantage. Ooh, double strike also. Cool. Even if you don't know what's in their Ooh. hand the first time, the second Ooh. time you will. Yeah. But also if you already know what's in their hand, you got two tutors, double strike. E. That's you can super- also, yeah. you can also play one of my favorite bad cards, a spy network. <laughs> <laughs> one, one oh. mana one mana instant God. look at target player's hand the top card of that player's library any face down creatures he or she controls and then look at the top four cards of your library and put it back in any order all for just one man that is a lot of text for a 30 year old card for one mana <laughs> a lot of looking <laughs> that card a lot of looking yeah. Yeah. so you know what's in their hand and if they cast that spell then you already know what's on top of the library too. yeah so you know for next turn yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, there was trouble. a land I used too. Moonring something. It's an island. 
It's not a good ogre. Moon Ring Island. It's a land island, so you can tutor it up with like a fetch. Uh, you could tap it to look at tar- the top card of target player's library if you have two or more blue permanents. Ooh. So you know what they're going to draw into and stuff. So yeah, it's silly. That does sound silly like a fun deck. build around. I-, I like it. Yeah, it was very fun on Commander Clash until I got destroyed <laughs> by acid it was, scatter. It was a chaos. The chaos wand. You can't control the chaos wand, yeah. Tomer. <laughs> <laughs> all right um that's gonna be it for our podcast we covered 12 no yes yeah. 12 yes we covered 12, 12 commanders 12 yeah 12 underrated commanders um in the video description you can find you know we we picked we picked actually uh an entire fourth row um but we'll leave that in the video description so if you want to see some underrated stuff um Check that out as a little bit of a bonus. Uh, thank you so much for reaching the end of the podcast. Do the whole like and subscribing stuff. That really helps the channel out wherever you're listening to this podcast. Um, and yeah, MTG Goldfish Merch Store, if you want to support us more with monies, we always take that. And we give you sweet deck boxes, deck sleeves, play mats, and so much more at mtggoldfishmerch.com. All right, that's it, everybody. <laughs> We don't know what we're going to be talking about next week. Leave a comment maybe down in the comments section if you're if there is a comment section where you're listening to it. Mm-hmm. Or just email us. I don't know. Uh, figure it out. Twitter. You know, whatever. We're, we're around. If you want to give us some, some ideas on what to talk about, we always like having more ideas too. All right. That's it, everybody. Until next time, friends. See you.